Really big welcome this morning to Kingsway Online Service. It is great to have you here with us. So you may know if you get the prayer request through that I've been struggling with my ears now since about March time. Uh, and I've had um, antibiotics, I've had them syringed and all sorts of things. Uh, and they just weren't getting any better. Um, and thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for all the words of encouragement. People have been texting me, messaging me, uh, and I'm all clear now. Uh, and I know people have been through a lot worse things, but when your ears are blocked and you can't hear what's going on, it's really difficult um, to work out what's happening around you. And the Bible says, he who has ears, let him hear. Uh, and I want to encourage you this morning that as you go through this service, really listen to what people are saying physically, listen to what they're saying spiritually as well. We've got an incredible message coming up from Salt Mine Trust, a really great testimony. Uh, and we've got a sermon coming up from Ben Oliver, and that's called Mud and Stars, and it's from Psalm 3.3. So get your Bibles ready for that, and we're looking forward to hearing him preach. And we're going to start off this morning with a time of worship. He's our ruler, 
Hey guys, it's Marcel here. I played Jesus in the Birmingham Passion Play 2019. Um, and it was so significant for me to play Jesus because I grew up in the city and I've been two very different people in the city of Birmingham. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. My parents were devout Christians. We went to church every Sunday. As I got older, I started to get to an age where I didn't want to go to church anymore. And I saw how you know, other people were living and I thought, yo, I want that. Like, I want to be a bad boy. Like, I want to be known on the roads. Like, I want to have status about me. I want boys to see me and, 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 and fear me. I want girls to see me and like me because that's where I found my identity. My identity was rooted in those two things. Going out and drink ups and sex and fighting and this and that. And my mind was consumed with it daily. And so I got to my last year of college. And one day I just felt like I wanted to go to church. Um, the night before on the Saturday, I was at a drink up um, and it was good and stuff. But that Sunday when I woke up, I was like, I need to go to church. I don't know why I feel like this, I need to go. So I went. And when the minister was preaching, it felt like if I had a diary at that time, it's like the preacher was literally reading out of my diary. And I felt so convicted in my heart, a sense of guilt and remorse for the way I was living. And God said to me, he says, Marcel, you're trying to be someone who you're not. I knew that voice wasn't me. Like I knew I didn't, and it wasn't a thundering sound out of heaven. It was just literally in here in my heart, but I heard it and it was clear as day. And I said, you know what? God, I'm gonna take that step with you. I don't know how you're gonna change me. I don't know how it's gonna work. But all I know is that I need to know who you are, Jesus. I need to know why you came and died for me. I need to know why people go to church every Sunday. I just need to understand why. And so that propelled me onto the journey of a lifetime. I always tell people this, I didn't change myself. If we try and change ourselves, we're more likely to revert back to how we used to be. But you see, when God changes you, he changes you internally and eternally. That's inside and forever. Playing Jesus in the Birmingham Passion Play is so significant, so significant, was so significant because I actually got to step into the shoes of the one who saved me from me. I actually got to step into the shoes of the one who saved me from sin and saved me from darkness and put me into marvelous light. The cross of Jesus reveals more about our value than it does about our sin. Yes, we were sinners and, and, and yes, Jesus came to die because of sin, but he also came to die because we were worth it. Many of us feel like I'm not worth it, but Jesus, Jesus said, listen, you were worth heaven getting bankrupt for a time to win you back to God. And don't let this year go by without at least asking the question, Jesus, who are you? Thank you. Hello, Kingsway. Pastor Ben here up in sunny Sheffield. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all managing to keep out of mischief. Um, massive thanks to Pastor John and Judith and to all the leadership team for their invitation to share with you today. Uh, so wherever you are, whatever day, time it is, it's good to be with you and God is good. Little phrase I want you to remember. Some of you may have heard this before. Two men looked out of prison bars. One saw mud and the other stars. Try and remember that if you can. Today I want to share with us just a little devotional message from the Psalms. We're in Psalm 3 uh, today. In fact, we're going to be in verse 3. Uh, let me just read the Psalm to you. It's a Psalm of David. He writes, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance and may your blessing be on your people. In just a few 
short words. David paints for us three very distinct pictures of the Lord. He says, firstly, that he is a shield. He is our glory. And he's also the lifter of our head. And it's really that third description that I want us to think about today. What a tremendous verse that is. Psalm 3 verse 3. If you had a little bit more time, I'd perhaps take us through each of those descriptions. But today we're thinking about God as the lifter of our head. About a month or so into lockdown, uh, I had a very difficult decision to make. I had to decide whether I was going to have a go at cutting my own hair or not. Um, I was still working right the way through lockdown, conducting funerals for people. So I had to keep myself looking pretty, you know, presentable at all times. And after a month or so of lockdown, I was beginning to look a little bit like Cousin It from the Adams family, if you know who I mean. So uh, all the barbers were closed and I, I decided to give it a go. So I ordered some clippers online. A week or two later, they turned up on the doorstep and I found myself in the bathroom, stood in front of the big mirror. I was armed with the clippers, the scissors, the comb. Uh, there was a little handheld, cheap handheld mirror so I could help sort of see the back of my head. There was a first aid kit on standby as well, just in case. My loving Catherine, my loving wife Catherine did offer to cut my hair, but I thought if she's holding a grudge for any reason, this could be trouble. So I thought, no, Ben, do it yourself. Uh, and if it all goes pear shaped, well, I've only got myself to blame. I kid you not, I was in that bathroom for over three and a half hours. And during that time, my head was put in every position possible, trying to get the clippers in the right place. I want to say this today. The position of our head is very, very important. Now, I'm not talking about hair cutting. I'm talking spiritually now, you know, as Christian people, the position of our head is incredibly important. God hasn't called us to be mud gazers. In fact, God's word to us today is very simply this. Be a stargazer, be a head held high type of Christian. God doesn't want or he or need actually in the 21st century for his church to be head lowered, down in the dumps, despairing, bemoaning the challenges that we're facing. Everything about Jesus is good news. So let's be a positive people. Uh, confident, alert and totally unashamed. He is the lifter of our head. So what does this particular description uh, tell us about God? Well, firstly, it tells us that he wants us encouraged. Psalm 3 uh, was written by David, as I've already said, and it was written at a particularly difficult time in his life. We can read about the background to the psalm in 2 Samuel chapter 15. In a nutshell, David was on the run. He was in flight. His son Absalom was after his dad's throne and days, consequently David ended up on the run. Yet in the midst of that trial and trouble, he picked up his pen and he started to declare some very important truth about God. He said, you are my shield, you're my glory, and you, Lord, are the lifter of my head. He encouraged himself in the Lord and strength began to rise up within him. And perhaps you need to do that today at some point. Perhaps you, perhaps there's somebody listening to this and you need to declare afresh that he is the lifter of your head despite some of the trials that you're facing and going through he's the lifter of our head you don't really need me to tell you this but we live in a crazy world and it seems to be getting crazier by the day in fact we live in a world that is chock-a-block full of stuff that will discourage stress disillusion and um we live in a world that is full of stuff that will get us looking at the mud rather than the stars. The pace 
of societal change at the moment is so fast and at times incredibly furious. I don't know if you've noticed, but there is an awful lot of anger about at the minute for all kinds of reasons. If we're not careful, church, all the negative noises around us can seriously lower our head. Do you know something? None of what has happened over the last six months or so has caught God off guard. I love that verse. I think it's Psalm 121 where it says he neither slumbers nor sleeps. None of this has caught God off guard. In fact, the year 2020, as crazy as it's turning out, is still very much part and parcel of his plans and purposes. He knows what he is doing. So be encouraged. He encourages us in many, many different ways, but predominantly he does so through his word, through scriptures like Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, which says, he will never leave you or forsake you. He encourages, th th encourages us through scriptures like 1 John 4 verse 4, where it says, he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And he encourages us through scriptures like Psalm 30 verse 5. I love that verse where it says, sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I could go on and on and on listing scripture after scripture. So lesson number one from David's description as, as God as the lifter of our head. Lesson number one, he wants us encouraged. Lesson number two, he wants us restored as well. The, uh, I was reading from the NIV earlier, but the New English translation of Psalm 3 verse 3 puts the verse slightly differently. It says, Lord, you are a shield, you are my glory and the one who restores me. It puts the verse slightly differently. Lovely word, restoration. And God is so much into that. Restoration is the fixing of something that is broke. You know, it's not always external situations and circumstances that cause us to lower our head. Sometimes it's internal stuff. The stuff that we do. Putting it bluntly, it's our sinfulness that causes us to look at the mud, to lower our head. I'm going to let you into a secret. Catherine already knows this all too well, but I am not perfect. Uh, I fail. I mess up. Sometimes my communion with the Lord needs a, a bit of restoration. How about you today? The Bible says we all fall short of God's standards in, in one way or another. However, and I've got some good news for us today. We can all be forgiven. We can all be restored. God is into that. He's the lifter of our head. And it's all through the beautiful work, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. Slates can be wiped clean. Fresh starts can be given. If we choose, we can walk hand in hand with our reason for being. We don't have to walk through life uh, thinking that there is no purpose, no meaning, that everything's random and, and insignificant. We can have our relationship with God restored. And it's a beautiful thing. I love that verse in the Psalms where it says he lifted me out of the mud and mire. He set my feet upon a rock and he's given me a firm place to stand. I recently had to swap my car and I found myself a couple of weeks ago looking around a showroom in Huddersfield. And I noticed two sections to the building that I was in. There was the showroom side of things and there was also the service department side of things. And I remember thinking to myself that it's the service department that really reflects, you know, something of our calling as the church. Ministry is ultimately about restoration. And whatever the new style of ministry that is going to be birthed over the next 12 months or so, Whatever the future holds, 
keep the main thing the main thing. We are called to be headlifters. Why? Because that's who he is. He's the lifter of our head. Perhaps you're listening to this today and you know you've slipped in one way or another. You know that your walk with the Lord isn't isn't what it was. God is so wanting to lift your head up today. He really is. And what are you waiting for? Why are you wasting precious time? If you let him, he'll lift your head in a very beautiful way. And you'll wonder why you didn't run to him sooner. So he wants us encouraged. He wants us restored. What else does this description of David's tell us about God? Well, finally, lesson number three, he wants us to see. He lifts our head because vision is important. Heads that are lifted see an awful lot further than those that aren't. I remember reading once about Charles Lindbergh. Back in 1927, he became the first man to successfully fly an airplane across the Atlantic. And on his flight to Paris, he ran into a blinding storm. There were clouds, thick clouds to the left as far as he could see. There were thick clouds to the right as far as he could see. There was lightning and heavy winds. Um, And he said that there was only one thing that he could really do to save himself and his little plane. He had to pull back on the controls. And as he did so, the plane started to climb and climb until it shot through the clouds above the storm where he could then see for miles and miles. You know, hear me. Sometimes we've got to go higher in order to see. I want to say this, Kingsway, Kingsway people keep climbing, keep praying, keep seeking the Lord. And in due course, you will see the way forward and you'll see afresh that the future is in completely in his hands. So a little word, if I may, to all those who are involved with church leadership, perhaps different departments in the church. I want to say this. Don't worry about the future. Don't be anxious. Don't be getting stressed about trying to plot a course for the next 12 months or so. He will lead. He will guide one step at a time. He will grant vision when he sees fit. In in the meantime, just keep looking up. There's a great look up passage in John's Gospel, chapter four. Jesus said, To those around him, look up, the fields are white for harvest, and they still are today. He wants us to see the harvest. And the Lord will show us the right tools for the job. The tools of yesteryear may not quite be fit for purpose now. They may not be up to the job, but he will show us the way forward and what to do. And remember, 2000 years of church history, he's not let us down once. And I don't think he's going to start now. Let me draw some of these thoughts to a close. Thank you for listening so well. Well, I hope you've been listening so well. Some of you may, might have pressed play and gone shopping. I don't know, but thank you for listening. Two men looked out through prison bars One saw mud and the other stars. He wants us encouraged. He wants us restored where necessary. And he wants us to see the harvest and ultimately that the future is in his hands. And all of these little truths are wrapped up in that little verse That little description of David's in Psalm 3, verse 3, where it says he is the lifter of our head. Friends, God bless you. I hope to see you real soon. Stay faithful, keep the faith and keep looking up. 
Thank you, Ben, for that great message this morning, a really timely message. And you know, when you hear something like that, there's usually one or two things that God's speaking to you directly about. So as we finish up in worship for this service, why don't you just ask God what he's saying to you or write something down and apply that to the week ahead. So we're going to finish now in worship. I was created to give you praise. I was created to bring you fame. Tell of your wonders and to proclaim you are good. I was created to celebrate all of your goodness and all your grace. Tell of your wonders and to proclaim you are good. hope you've enjoyed this morning's service. I hope it's spoken to you. I hope it's encouraged you. And my prayer for you is that you would put God first this week. You'd read his word, you'd listen to his voice, and you think, what would God do in all these situations, no matter what you're going through, whether you're thriving at the moment or just barely surviving at the moment. And also look up for the um, numbers and details coming up on the screen. There's plenty of ways you can get hold of us at Kingsway Church. And just because we can't gather, doesn't mean we aren't here. There's people doing a lot of things behind the scenes. So if you need help with anything, please let us know. Have a fantastic week.